bless the Lord. Another short edification from the church without judgment. We're going to take our time and flow with the Holy Ghost. So you may say, why is he hesitating? Why isn't there any content? Well, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to deliver us today. And whatever he wants to do, I was in here sitting listening to worship and then I heard a sound. That sound is the Spirit of Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It'll bring all things back to your remembrance. It will judge sin. It will convict us of sin. It is the paracletes, it is the helper. He wants to help us today. Today I want to talk about a short story in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And it talked about a man named King David. King David is a man after God's own heart, and he gets in trouble. Have you ever been in trouble? He found some pride. He found some arrogance. He found some riches and some glory in his kingship. And I want to start in chapter 12 because have you pleaded with God about some things and you needed it to happen and it just did not come to pass. I'm here to speak to you and God is speaking to us and he says maybe it's for your safety and protection. So I'm going to pray and we're going to look at this word. Father God, we bless you and thank you for you are the kingdom of God. And we bless you on this Tuesday because the Holy Ghost is getting ready to take over and give us a blessing. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Baptize us back into your baptism. The Holy Spirit where it's fire. And we'll be careful to bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go into 2 Samuel chapter 12. And look what happened to David, and then I'm going to get into this, and I just want to share one nugget maybe today. And here we go. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? This is what happened. This is what David did. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and you have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. So that's what King David did. He saw and then he wanted and then he pursued the woman. But before he pursued the woman, he had to kill Uriah. He was a part of his military. He put him on the front line. Then I want to read in verse 15 of that chapter. Then Nathan the prophet departed to his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. I'm going to read that again. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and laid all night on the ground. David pleaded. Have you pleaded for anything in your life and it never happened and you needed it to? So the elders of the house arose and went to him to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. Then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. 
how can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm to himself. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? Is there something in your life that has not happened and it has devastated you? That could be your child. Is the child dead, God is saying. They said, and they said he is dead. Listen to this. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. I'm speaking to you now. I'm speaking. I'm going to slow this down. God is just saying it might have died, whatever that dream is, whatever that vision, but this is what we must do, and this is what David did. So David arose from the ground. He washed and anointed himself. Clean yourself up, the Lord said, and he changed his clothes. Yes, change your clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord. We're doing it right now. And he worshiped. Then he went to his house. And when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. Verse 21. Then his servant said to him, what is this that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. He had faith. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, and he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. So he bore, so she bore a son and called his name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him. Now the Lord loved him. In verse 16, we see that David pleaded with God for the child. And we see that he pleaded and David fasted and he went in and laid all night on the ground, but it was not in God's will. And the child died and, and then he fasted and he wept, but it did not happen. It wasn't in God's will. And God says today, saints, men and women, boys and girls, you may be pleading for something that you've lost. You may be pleading for something that you need. And just like in verse 16, you're pleading, but God says this. Get up from the ground and wash yourself and anoint yourself and clean your clothes because something new is coming for you. Something new is coming for you, and in this text, what happened later was what was better than happened earlier because he married this woman, mm -hmm, and he asked, remember, he, he might not be gracious with me. King David understood that even if God did not bring back the child, which he didn't, he decided to be in humility and God gave him a son, and his name was Solomon, and that name in the Hebrew means peaceful. He gave him another chance. He pleaded with God. He cried out to God. He fasted. He did not eat. But it was not in God's will because he did not take all the steps properly. He did not take ownership. He tried to hide his sin. But it says that he came to himself. And he understood that even though he killed a man, made love to a woman that was not his wife, another man's, and then he realized that God could not be gracious because of the evil. But then God did a new thing and gave him another chance and King Solomon was born. And it says that he was a peaceful man, that name, and he will be peaceful with you. Sons and daughters of the Most High, 
the Lord Yahweh today, he wants to be peaceful with us. He wants to show us kindness and loving kindness and apathy. He wants us to have more faith and he is depositing that right now. On this Tuesday, I want us to just think about all that he has done for us. And just like King David, he understood that even when he messed up, that if he trusted long enough, he could accelerate a new plan. And he had a child, and this man was the King Solomon, the still the wisest man ever. And we read the book of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and things like that, historical you know, psalms and, and wisdom from God and not man. So as we meditate right now from the church without judgment, I want us to take a second and meditate and ponder on the Lord and how good he's been to you and where he has you now. And have you thought about where he might take you? And when we get in our minds, in our spirits, and we have the mind of Christ, and then when we connect our minds and our spirits and our conscience with him, then he will catapult us into a new civilization, a new revelation, and he will manifest you back into a new place. It might not be a baby, but it this baby will be a new miracle from the Lord and you will hold it in care just like a baby because there's no reason to fear God is able. It reminds me of Abraham and Sarai when the baby was getting ready to be produced. God told them first and they she laughed. God says today, I want you to be peaceful like Solomon and I want you to laugh like Sarai. Father God, we bless you right now. We bless you, Lord, because you are our liberty. And Lord, we want to be peaceful even though in the storm when we mess up, or when we are not messing up and we still have unbelief. Snatch out unbelief, Lord, and deposit faith. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're asking, Lord, that you would perform a new miracle in our lives. Father, we're asking right now that we will snuff out fear and we'll help someone and that will ignite more faith for us even when we don't have Maybe what we need to bless. But you said, open up our hands and find it. Father God, we're just asking, Lord, that the church will continue to grow out of your truth and the spirit, the spirit of God. And six days it was made. And on the seventh, on the seventh, it was a Sabbath. On the seventh, the Sabbath, and we rested. Rest in the Lord Jesus Christ from the church without judgment. Shabbat Shalom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty by Jesus' perfect blood. Amen.